first webinar of the Parent Guardian webinar series for this upcoming academic year. Today we have with us Kamala Kaim, Associate Dean of Students and Director of Student Engagement, as well as Meredith Smith, Assistant Director of Residence Life, and PJ Lucky, Assistant Director of Residence Life as well. So this webinar is going to provide all of you with some important information for a successful arrival process. We're here to answer any of your questions while highlighting some of the move-in day logistics. Um, so you'll see on the upper right hand corner of your screen there is a chat box if you have any questions for our presenters at any time you can write your answers in that box and we will field them um, to the presenters at the end of the webinar you can also email in to engagement at fairfield.edu and we'll answer your questions live there too so now I'll turn it over to our three presenters and we'll get started Great, thank you Elizabeth. And also I wanted to introduce Elizabeth Elliott who's behind the scenes. She's gonna be moderating our session today. Liz is a program coordinator in the Office of Student Engagement. Um, for families, in case you missed it, uh, Sunday, September 4th, uh, 2016 is opening day for the class of 2020. Um, with that, we also wanted to point out our go-to site for any questions that you may have around move-in, traffic flow, mm -hmm. campus, um, campus map as well as what to bring to campus, uh, timing of when you should arrive. This is the official website for fall welcome slash move in fairfield.edu slash fall welcome. Great. Uh, move in day is an awesome day on campus. Uh, we're really excited to welcome you all to campus. As you'll notice on the slide we have um, some guidelines about when you should arrive to campus. Any transfer student should arrive anytime from 8 to 11.45. You're going to be going to a main office, the um, Office of Residence Life, located in the lower level of the Barone Campus Center. Any other students, we tend to load the buildings top down. Um, it makes this process easier because we have an up staircase and down staircases in each building. Um, so if your student is assigned to the fourth floor, we recommend you're in the first group that should arrive to campus from 8 to 8.45. Um, then we follow hourly third floor, second floor, first floor. Um, we will have folks available to assist you um, in your move-in process. It's an awesome day. If you are a commuter student, we highly recommend you arrive to campus by 2 p.m. for the president's welcome, and then you'll have your FYE meetings for the rest of the day. It's a fantastic process. I also want to say we cannot begin to stress enough that mm -hmm. we ask our families to adhere to this time. This mm -hmm. significantly helps with traffic flow and move in flow so again we ask that you do your best to adhere to this time these times mm -hmm. great so we want to talk about our, our numbers for this upcoming year um, in campaign hall we have about 234 residents in Jogues hall we have about 302 residents in regis hall we have about 298 residents in gonzaga hall we have about 179 residents and we have 66 commuter students. So if you imagine that maybe each student may have probably maybe one or two cars coming in with them, so that's a mm -hmm. lot of cars coming on campus, and we ask again that you do your best to adhere to those traffic times um, as you're entering uh, campus as well. And we're gonna highlight very, uh, very strong um, guidelines so that we can make sure we get through the day in a timely manner. Great. Um, so all cars on move-in day will enter through the main gate that is off of North Benson Road. Um, you'll need to know which building you are going to because there will be certain traffic lines that you'll be directed into based upon which um, community your student is moving into. So when you enter the main gate, if you're moving into Campion or Jokes, you'll be asked to move forward. If you're moving to Gonzaga or Regis, we're going to ask you to make an immediate left and then follow the loop around campus. Campus is beautiful and, and will have many signage to help you. Um, if you're a transfer student, you're also going to make an immediate left and then turn right into the BCC. That's the Burrow Campus Center parking lot. 
um, and you'll check in with the Office of Residence Life. Um, there will be people here to guide you through the way, um, but first year students, you'll be um, picking up your key at your residence hall location. Great. So let's talk about the process. So we, we expect you to arrive at the unloading zone for your residence hall. Um, when you arrive, you'll be given a, an arrival time card. What you see, um, someone will be out there passing to you, one of our volunteers. Uh, we actually put your room number and your cell phone number um, down on that, on that card. One family member should stay with the vehicle. At that time, uh, another, at that time you unload the car for about 20 minutes. Um, as your student checks in, you'll see the tables where they can pick up their keys and their welcome packet. Uh, one person, again, must remain at the car at all times while you're unloading. Uh, we, we, we stress this, please move your car after 20 minutes um, uh, to the move-in, excuse me, to the move-in day parking. You'll receive a map up, upon entering campus, and again, if you need help with the directions, you'll always have someone there to be able to guide you. Um, please pick up your stag card in the lower level BCC and enjoy the festivities. Yeah, great. Okay. And, and go ahead. <laughs> oh, just to add with that, um, it's really important that um, we are a well-oiled machine on move-in day, but it's because our parents are so fantastic in, um, in moving our cars. So we will help you unload your car, get all your students' items with, with you and your student up to the room. Um, but it's great if we have somebody in the car so we can um, communicate with you um, and if, if somebody, it's great if you have the AC running, it's nice <laughs> as well um, for that person who gets to stay with the car, but it's very helpful for us. In addition to that, we actually have over uh, 200, actually close to 300 student leaders that are volunteering to help mm -hmm. with the unloading and moving in process. Um, and again, they're they're here to help as you move in. So again, when you unload your car, we ask that our, our family members, obviously one person stays with the car, but our family members and the student along with the volunteers are moving in the items. We do ask our volunteers not to lift the mo the really expensive items, mm -hmm. like the you know if you're bringing in a TV or something like a really expensive computer, we actually ask that the family members and the student uh, do the lifting of those items while our volunteers uh, do the lifting, help support the lifting of the, uh, the other items going in. Um, the 20 minute is really important for us. Uh, and again, you will see when you get there, it's a well-oiled machine. I think we usually unload within 10 minutes mm -hmm. and then we have our families move their vehicles. Great. Mm -hmm. um, something that's really important that will really help the process is labeling your items before you get to cam campus. Um, so. Uh, we will have folks who will help you carry, but it's great if the items are pre-labeled. It saves us a lot of time. And what you'll want to do on that label, and it doesn't have to be a label, it can be masking tape, it can be blue tape, whatever is the most easy thing for you to label with, is your student's name, the building, and their room number. Um, you'll see the example, Meredith Smith, Campion 301. Um, it's that simple because our, our volunteers will move those items specifically into that room. Um, so please make sure if you are able to do so, um, label in advance. We will have labelers on site, but it, it makes it the process go so much quicker. Yeah, and that includes even lamps. Literally mm -hmm. everything that's not that if you, if they're not obviously you label your containers, but if there are items that are not in a container, we still want you to put a label on mm -hmm. those items. And I think one of our area coordinators like to joke that she still has an iron in her office from last year's moving date on, you know, <laughs> still looking for the owner for that item. Mm -hmm. Um, just to give you, for those of you who are visual learners, which I am, this is just to give you a visual representation of move-in day. What you're seeing right there is an arrow of the entrance off North Benson Road, and that is the main entrance. We ask that all of our families enter 1073 Nord, North Benson Road as the main entrance to campus. All other gates across campus will be closed, so make sure you type in that address uh, in your uh, navigation system. As Meredith uh, or PJ said earlier, uh, again, this might be counterintuitive, counterintuitive to those who are living in Regis and Gonzaga, but when you do enter campus, you, for those who live in Regis and Gonzaga, you're making an immediate left, and again, we will have volunteers all along the way guiding you through the process, but you coming in and knowing where to go will help significantly with not delaying folks from entering, uh, entering the main gate and backing up traffic. This is the area by the pond for those of you that have visited campus. This is uh, uh, when you make a left and you go all the way to the end of campus, this is the pond area. And so for Regis and Gonzaga, you are heading all the way to that area and then you're gonna be making a right up the hill. 
Uh, these are pictures from a couple years ago. Uh, for those of you that live in Regis, when you do enter the Regis parking area, you notice that there are three lines, kind of like Disney World, mm -hmm. um, that are there. And we basically would ask you to go into one of those lines. And if you notice in, um, like in the center lane, there's a person in a red shirt. We'll have folks there telling you when to move up to this area, which is right in front of the Regis area. Um, you will be signaled to move into this area to unload. So we try to get you as close to the building to unload so that it's not as um, strenuous for you all. This is, uh, when you're in, this, is, this is the Campion and the Jogues uh, traffic. Mm -hmm. So if you live in Campion on the extreme right hand side when you're looking at this image, that's the Campion lane. Um, and then extreme left side is the Jogues lane. Uh, again, this is just a visual pictorial uh, obviously a picture for you all to take a look at. And this again, Campion is a building on the left-hand side. The left-hand side traffic is Campion, and the right-hand side traffic is Jokes. Again, that's Jokes traffic. I know, it looks intimidating. It looks like it's a long wait, but it actually goes by pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. That's Jokes, right in front of Jokes. If you notice, you're, put it, you're pulling in. Um, uh, so, ooh. I think we just lost a single. Okay. Um, you're pulling in a traffic circle, circle on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. Normally, when you pull into a traffic circle, you're pulling on the right hand side. But again, folks will be guiding you as to where you pull in, and you're unloading in that area. Uh, parking. Um, one thing, uh, parking basically across campus, uh, once you unload, you can park anywhere across campus except the parking areas closest to the residence halls. Um, the only exception to that is Jogues. Jogues is our largest residence hall building. There is a parking lot that's right across from the Jogues Hall. And basically, if you live in Jogues and you're onloading, you can park in that lot and stay parked in that lot for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. So that's a luxury for Jogues, and that's to help Jogues move in quick, uh, much more quickly and efficiently because they are the largest building. But once you unload, again, once you go through that 20 minute period of unloading, you can, you will be, you, you, we will have volunteers helping you leave that area, and then you can park anywhere across campus. We highly recommend that you make your way back to the BCC area. You can park in the BCC lot as well as the prep lot, the Kelly Center lot, DSB lot. They're all open for you all to park in. Great. Um, so questions we get asked every year are what not to bring to campus. So um, this is not an extensive list, but these are the key things that we ask you not to bring to campus. Um, basically anything that could be a fire hazard. So please do not bring halogen light bulbs or lamps that have halogen light bulbs in them, um, hot plates, anything with an open heating source. Um, students do bring um, one cup coffee um, makers, but they don't have an open heating source on them. Toasters, toaster ovens, electric frying pans, uh, George Foreman grills or any type of grill are not allowed in the first year or sophomore residence halls. Air conditioners, mercury thermometers, candles, no candles, and surprisingly hoverboards. Please do not bring hoverboards. Um, their lithium batteries tend to overheat and they can cause um, a hazard there. Um, in addition, the university provides a microwave and refrigerator, so you do not have to bring one. Please do not bring one. Um, we have strict energy requirements, and those are to that level. Additionally, do not bring pets um, other than fish in a 10-gallon tank or less. Water beds or any type of mattress you should not bring and routers, switches, or wireless-only printers. You can bring a printer that is wireless, but it needs to have a wired capability. And um, our network is very good on campus, and that's why um, routers and switches tend to disrupt that already very robust network. So moving day, what are the festivities that are happening on moving day? After you move in, and we usually wrap up moving day, uh, the actual moving in process around noon, um, but there are key offices open for you all, mainly in the Kelly Center as well as the Barone Campus Center lower level. The Health Center will be in the Barone Campus Center uh, lower level to handle any immunization questions you have. The Stackard office will be open. Financial aid will be open for a short period of time. I believe it's 2 to 4 p.m. As well, the bursar will be available. Counseling and psychological services will also be available as well. And then all of our, um, our Stack Spirit shop will be open. Our downtown bookstore will be open for uh, textbook pickup. Um, and the mailroom obviously will be open. So a number of our resources will be available for our campus uh, for our families that day. 
uh, at two o'clock is a president's welcome, which will be at the Oak Room patio. For those of you who came to June orientation, that is the same area that you all experienced the orientation welcome at. So it's that same exact location at two o'clock. At 2.45, we have a special session for those of our families who missed June orientation. Um, that will be at Alumni House. And again, if you visit uh, fairfield.edu slash fall, fall welcome, you will see the actual schedule for move-in day there. Mm -hmm. uh, feel free to print it ahead of time, or when you enter the campus gate, you actually will, re will receive a schedule. During the 2.45 segment, for those of you that actually went to June orientation, we also have residence life family meetings that are occurring during that time at 2.45, where you will meet our uh, staff that lives, staff and students that live in the mm -hmm. residence halls, and they'll be happy to answer any questions relating to the res life experience. At four o'clock is our mass and reflective walk, and at five o'clock, we actually ask our families to depart campus, um, say goodbye, uh, as, and then your students will continue on with uh, late night programming going on that, that evening. Uh, and as I mentioned again, key campus partners will be available throughout the day. Uh, one thing to note that the moving day schedule that you will receive at the gate is very different mm -hmm. than the fall welcome schedule that your student will receive when they pick up their key. The fall welcome schedule is actually a two day experience for our students um, before classes start. We like to keep them busy and engaged before classes start to mitigate homesickness and to as, as well as to ensure that they are really set up for success to, to kick off that first week of school, those, those first weeks of school. Um, we also, during the fall welcome schedule for our students, we focus on community building. We talk about stepping up as stags. Um, we do the class picture. We have residence hall meetings for them. There's definitely commuter orientation and socials available to them. We will all obviously do campus tours and shuttles will be offered into uh, to downtown as well as to key shopping locations for them to take care of their last minute needs before classes start. And I think that officially wraps up Yay. our official presentation. And now we will love to hear questions from you all about the entire arrival process. And I'm going to pass it over to Liz. Great. So the first question that we had was from Rachel about lofting beds. Mm -hmm. If a student wishes to loft their bed, what are the materials available to achieve this? Do we need parents and students need to bring anything? Mm -hmm. um, how might they go about lofting a bed? So um, I'll take this one. Um, to loft a bed, um, in most of our first year buildings, uh, the materials will be there for your student. Um, we have two types of furniture. Um, in Jogues, Regis, or Campion, um, the beds are loftable yourselves. We will provide you mallets and bed parts. Um, which will be located at a central location. It's usually one of the lounges in the building. And um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward on how to loft a bed. Um, in Gonzaga, if your student lives there, we have a form and we will be lofting their beds for them. Um, the, the process requires some tools that our campus ops communi ha community has. Um, so we usually have bed lofting forms at check-in if your student wishes to loft their bed and that will happen either on move-in day or during that fall welcome week. We usually get those beds lofted pretty quickly. Great. Tracy asked what if we would like an extra refrigerator? Great question. Um, we have pretty strict rules about refrigerators. Um, in terms of if you have a medical reason and that is documented, we are able to get you an extra refrigerator, but that's usually our only um, way. You'll notice the micro fridges, they have a, they're pretty large. They have a whole refrigerator, a freezer, and a microwave, and students usually make pretty good do with it. Great. Georgia said, um, hoping that the presenters will tell us that we have students who empty the car and carry it all upstairs while the parents have coffee. Is that true here at Fairfield? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> um, sort of true. Uh, no, we actually, we do have, like I said earlier in the presentation, we have close to 300 student leaders helping out with movement, but the, the key word is helping. Um, and so we do ask that uh, our families and our students who are coming in uh, do help out. It is a, a family affair, as we like to say, uh, the move-in process. So all hands on deck, essentially. Mm -hmm. And as you yeah. are getting ready to pack your vehicles, just be mindful your student's not taking their whole room at home to college with them. Um, so just definitely bring the essentials. Know that we have a lot of stores near campus if there's anything that you might have forgotten as well. I, I would definitely add, uh, with packing your cars up, 
definitely encourage your student to communicate with their roommate mm -hmm. about who's bringing what. Um, that would definitely help with space in the room. So no two TVs, right? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Oh, you never know. You're right. You're right. You're right. You never know. Tom asks, goes going along with the logistics of the move-in process, will there be a dolly or hand carts? Do parents and students need to bring their own to campus when they're moving in? We we actually recommend if you do have one to bring one, but we do we will have 150 Home Depot shopping carts spread across four buildings. Um, and I would say it, it always helps if families are bringing their do uh, a dolly to help with the move-in process. But we do have 150 shopping carts, again, but those are spread across four buildings to help with the process. Perfect. Liam said that we are the latest group to move in, 11 o'clock mm -hmm. into Regis. Where most likely will parking be available at that time? It's a great question. Um, so all lots on campus are open to um, to you and your family. And um, I would say we will be able to direct you to which parking lots will be open. Um, and we'll play it by ear that day. But typically, um, there are some spaces in the prep lot, which is by the high school, which is on campus, which is fairly close to the BCC, um, or the quick center lot, which is slightly further, but not that much farther. Yeah, and I would say the quick center, uh, the quick center lot is a catch-all. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're in the last time slot, sometimes when we realize that there are no other cars That's behind true. you, we actually open up the Regis parking lot for you to park there. So you might be one of those lucky folks that is in the back of the line, and then we usually start breaking down, move in, and we say, hey, just park in Regis, and you should be fine as well. So, mm -hmm. Great. And along the same lines, uh, John's daughter is moving into Jogues. So can or cannot can or cannot John park in the Jogues lot after the stuff is moved in? As long as there's space, mm -hmm. um, John can park in the Jogues lot. Okay. Yeah. Actually, if you get a spot in the jokes lot, as soon as you move in, you just can stay there for the rest of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Trish is asking, is lunch available to the family? Uh, so uh, lunch is not available. Lunch, you will have the option to purchase lunch, but we do have a hot dog stand and drinks available to our families. Uh, but the st snack bar will be open and ready to serve our families for lunch. Uh, and again, we'll have a DJ, and we'll do we'll do have some hot dogs and tofu dogs and some drinks available to our families uh, while welcome is ha while moving is happening. Naomi is asking, do you have any recommendations regarding siblings being present at move in? That's a great question. Hmm. If the siblings are helping them move in, <laughs> we welcome it. The, the more help, the better. Um, again, as Kamala mentioned, it's a family affair. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. I think if 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 you all feel that your the siblings should be there as as a last you know uh, way to say goodbye, and um, then yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty packed schedule. I think you all will be engaged throughout the day. Uh, but again, you can check out Fall Welcome website and see what's going on for you all that day. Perfect. Uh, closets or armoires in Gonzaga? Size, please. Okay. Um, I don't have specifics on size. But uh, there is an armoire in, for each student in every single first year residence hall. I do believe, do, is the size available on the website? It should be, it's somewhere on the website. Okay. Yes. Um, so, and I think we do have the residence life website that's linked off the Fall Welcome mm -hmm. website. And if it's not, I, I actually will double check right after this webinar and make sure that we are linking to the residence life website because I do believe they have measurements mm -hmm. uh, on their site. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, two textbook questions for anybody that wants to take it. The first, um, how does a student pick up books that have already been ordered? Is there a deadline for ordering books in order so that the student can get them before class? And then um, another parent wrote in, my son has received emails from some of his professors about purchasing books. Should those be purchased now and shipped home? Should they be purchased and mm -hmm. shipped to campus? Can the student get them once they're I'm on actually going to feel this question back to Liz. <laughs> Liz, do you mind taking the lead with that question? <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> if, if it was me purchasing the textbooks, I would say to get them as early as possible because those assignments do start right at the beginning of the semester, um, maybe even beforehand. Um, and it might just be easiest to have them shipped right to campus or right to the downtown bookstore. Um, at this time, I wouldn't recommend them being bought and shipped to the house in case, again, your student doesn't get them in time for move-in. Um, so either to their campus mailbox here 
um, or to the downtown Fairfield bookstore, which will have shuttles running to and from so they can go and get their books that way. And I way. believe, and the reason why I feel that back to Liz, Liz is actually a re recent alum. She's a class <laughs> of 2015. Um, uh, Liz, just really quick, are they able to rent their books? I believe so. Okay. Some books. So when you go into my dot Fairfield and you can see the list of textbooks that um, that are required for each of the classes, what you'll see is an option for some books to either buy or rent. Some of them only have a rent option. Some of them only have a buy option. Um, at the end of the semester, the bookstore does buy back books. So you can earn some of your money back that way. Um, if you want to buy them, rent them, that's totally up to you. Uh, let's see here. Any photos of the rooms? Um, are there any photos of the rooms available for planning? We didn't see Gonzaga when we were there visiting campus. Um, we usually do have photos on the Residence Life website, um, but I will definitely look into that and pass that information along to Kamala after yeah, the session. Absolutely, we'll have we'll make sure this is uh, you have access to those pictures yeah. after this webinar. I will say, like, all the first-year buildings are pretty consistent in this shape and size that they are, and they are all uh, true doubles, true triples, or true quads. Um, we have no converted spaces. Kathy is asking, is a Bed Bath & Beyond or similar type of mm -hmm. store nearby for forgotten items? Yes, we do have a Bed Bath & Beyond uh, close to campus. Um, it's less than a mile from campus. Um, there's a Target not so far away. Um, a lot of grocery stores that tend to have summary items will also have items that you might need. Yes, and on day two, we do have campus shuttles heading to Bed Bath & Beyond as well. Perfect. Uh, Karen is asking, will elevators, specifically in Jogues, mm -hmm. uh, be available or only the up and down stairs? So that's a great question. We do utilize our elevators on move-in day. Um, but we tend to use them for either very large items or for um, shopping carts. For shopping yeah. carts. Yeah. So we recommend that for the stair the stairs are people only and the elevator are items only. There will be somebody in each elevator or by each elevator floor making sure that those elevators come down um, quickly and are refilled and carts are refilled. Great. Trisha is asking, if we are coming with two cars, can one parent stay with both cars while the other parent helps get the stuff upstairs, or do both parents have to stay with each car? No, one parent can stay with both cars. We're pretty flexible as long as someone's there to, to move the car if we need it moved. Mm -hmm. Great. And what type of flooring is in Regis on the first floor? I believe it's linoleum. Yeah, it's tile. Tile. Perfect. My daughter is moving in next Thursday morning as a part of the community service program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What resources, right. tools, et cetera, will be available? So your new student leader will be available to meet you. Um, and while you're, as soon as you arrive, we'll make sure that your new student leader is connected to you. But um, and as well as in the building that you're staying at, the resident assistant will be living mm -hmm. in those buildings on the floor, so they will be engaging with you as well. And then. Pretty much the next day you're heading into your community service uh, immersion trip so you'll be pretty busy all the way through until move-in day and then you'll uh, for those students who are moving in who are doing the immersion trip um, you will be experiencing the immersion trip and then on sunday you will fold into the fall welcome experience that's going on excellent um what do students and families do until the 2 p.m welcome if they are on the early move-in time schedule uh so the 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 move-in day schedule you have campus resources to if you have any questions around that visiting campus you can do errands uh downstairs downtown um again there's a snack bar uh i'm sure you're going to be picking up textbooks uh but essentially it's just you you will see there are a number of different resources um uh, that, that are available to our families before 12 o'clock or before 2 o'clock that day. Um, and I, yes, that's it. Can yeah. I add yeah, sure. to that? Um, the nice thing is you'll have time to also set up your, the room and make mm -hmm. it homey. Um, we really encourage students to bring pictures, put things up on the walls, like make it their space, and that can take some time. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. 
um, Michelle, or um, sorry, Micheline, uh, has two daughters moving in to the first floor of Regis in separate rooms mm -hmm. and was told that they can arrive early since they have two students to set up. <laughs> Is that true? We're like looking at each other. <laughs> I, they were planning on arriving at around 10 a.m. to do so. That's a great question. Floor. I don't know who would have made that um, that decision, but I would recommend them coming at their typical move-in time. We will have volunteers throughout that whole move-in process. Like our volunteers don't go away after 10 a.m. They're there yeah. till till every last student is moved in. So I think you'll be okay going with your time block. Mm -hmm. Um, great. Karen, I heard business students do better with HP computers than Macs. Can anybody comment? I would rather not answer that question. I would, um, what I would do is get that uh, resource up on our website because I do know there are specifics related, uh, specific computer recommendations that are being made for engineering students, for business students, mm -hmm. but I, I, we don't know, I don't believe, know mm -hmm. the answers to those questions and I definitely do not want to give you misinformation. So we will, uh, we will email that information out after this webinar. Perfect. Do the wardrobe closets have drawers as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, they have two drawers right under mm -hmm. the wardrobe closet. So. Perfect. Are small nails allowed or only command hooks? Uh, we prefer that nothing is drilled or hammered, hammered into <laughs> walls. Um, they are cinder block walls, so I'd recommend command hooks, putty. Um, there are a lot of different options uh, for adhering things to the wall. Perfect. Uh, do we need waste baskets and hangers, or are they provided in each dorm room? You will need waste back. You will need waste baskets and hangers. Um, they're not provided. Uh, we do have a trash room mm -hmm. where, where they can bring their things, but I would recommend that they have a small waste basket mm -hmm. in their room. And recycling bin. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, if my student is interested in switching their room and their roommate. How would they go about doing so? <laughs> <laughs> so we actually have a, uh, a two-week freeze um, on when it comes to a switching roommates. We really encourage students to really get to know each other first before they make the decision to switch rooms. Unless there's some type of emergency, um, some life-threatening instance, um, then we really encourage students to, to stay in that mm -hmm. same room for at least two weeks. And I think it's important. Um, your student will have a lot of time to create a roommate agreement with their roommate um, and the resident assistants will be there with them through that process. Um, we are at high capacity um, this this fall so we want to make sure that we're helping students work through any conflicts or concerns that they might have um, before we, we even you know float Consider, the idea of, yeah. of moving them. Yeah. I think, oh, go ahead, Pichu. Well, one thing that we encourage students to do is to, to really, if anything comes up, if there any mm -hmm. conflict with you and your roommate, for them to really just talk it out. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times students won't talk or won't communicate because they're used to texting. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but we really encourage them just, just to talk, and usually our students work it out. Mm -hmm. And when in doubt, if your student's struggling, they can always talk to the resident assistant mm -hmm. for guidance. And um, all most of our buildings, I believe, or all of our buildings have a live-in professional staff mm -hmm. member. Mm -hmm. Um, that's there uh, and so they also have that person as a resource. Mm -hmm. Perfect and last question I'm seeing um, so if any parents or guardians want to send in any last minute ones feel free to do so at this time um, but the last one I'm seeing are tower fans okay to bring? I believe so. Yeah. 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 Great. Great. So we will definitely uh, follow up with our audience on the computer specifications, I believe, and we'll make sure that we link to the Residence Life website off the Fall Welcome website so that our families can get the specifics of um, how the rooms look as well as measurements relating to, I believe one was around the closet. Um, and again, for events and activities that are going on that day, you can visit the website and download the schedule for move-in day. Oh. Two more if you okay, guys great. are up for sure. them. No, great, yeah, great. Yeah, My son is on the second floor of Regis. What size mm -hmm. rug? Again, this kind of goes to what you were just mm -hmm. speaking to, Kamala, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. room sizes and things like that. Um, but also, can over-the-door hooks be used? 
Uh, we tend to not recommend over the door hooks on their main door. Um, they can put them on their, they can get the smaller kind for their armoire door um, because we don't want to damage the doors to each of them are fire rated and they're fire doors. So anything that scrapes paint or scrapes at the door is not recommended. Um, I do believe uh, the room specification sizes are on our website um, and they're pretty much standard. Um, and again, like there are stores near campus if you want to wait and hold off before purchasing a rug, just so you make sure you see how the room's set up and where the rug would go. Great. And are extra large mattresses ever available for kids over six feet tall? Yes. I would tell that student to email us directly at residencelife at fairfield.edu, and we can connect with you um, about that specific, that specific need. Great. That's all I have. Great. Great. It's been wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all.